The Douglas A-26 Invader was the only American bomber to fly missions in three different major wars. It was also the last propeller-driven twin-engine bomber produced for the U.S. Air Force. The legendary aircraft was a twin-engine light bomber ground attack vehicle, able to carry an extensive bomb load and a generous range of guns. Different versions would serve in all kinds of missions, whether in combat or reconnaissance operations. The invaders were designed and built by the Douglas Aircraft Company during World War II. They then served in several Cold War conflicts, as well as in Korea, Vietnam, and Southeast Asia until 1969. Their last flight outside official military missions was in 1994, but after 21 years of restoration work, a few of them recently took to the skies as part of the commemorative Air Force fleet, proving that the invaders still have much more to give. A versatile design. The Douglas A-26 Invader was the planned successor of the A-20 Havoc, one of the most widely operated aircraft by the Allies in World War II. After a redesignation from A-26 to B-26 from 1948 to 1965, he was often confused with the Martin B-26 Marauder. But the Marauder first flew almost two years before the Invader. However, both models were powered by the Pratt & Whitney R-2800 Double Wasp 18-cylinder double-row radial engine commonly used at the time. The Invader's airframe employed an innovative NACA 65215 laminar flow airfoil wing developed by aerodynamicist A.M.O. Smith and designed by Ed Heinemann, Robert Donovan, and Ted Smith. On July 10, 1942, the prototype XA-26 flew for the first time in California and showed excellent performance in handling. Minor problems with the engine cooling required cowling changes and the elimination of propeller spinners in production aircraft. Recurrent collapses during testing further needed reinforcements in the nose landing gear. Two configurations were developed for the early version. The A-26B had an all-purpose nose that could be fitted with six and later eight 50 caliber machine guns, or 20 or 37 millimeter auto cannons. In contrast, the A-26C was equipped with a glass bombardier nose for medium altitude precision bombing, and two fixed M2 nose guns were swapped for underwing or internal wing guns. A total of 1,570 aircraft had been produced, when a modification added three guns in each wing, and the eight-nose was developed, increasing the armament to 14 50 caliber machine guns in some models. In addition, the noses in the B and C models were interchangeable. The first 820 production aircraft featured a flat-topped canopy, which was improved for visibility with a clamshell-style canopy. Besides the pilot, a second crew member would serve as navigator and gun loader, the nose gun in the A-26B would be operated by the pilot, while in the A-26C, the second crew member would act as the navigator and bombardier, relocating to the nose for bombardment. A jump seat accommodated a third crew member behind the navigator's seat. This post controlled the dorsal and ventral gun turrets remotely via a novel and complex dual-ended periscope. This device took a long time to develop and caused several production delays. It consisted of a vertical column with transversing, elevating, and depressing periscope with sights on each end. A mirror in the center seamlessly flipped to show either the upper or lower views. The gunner would sit facing backward and gaze into a binocular periscope sight embedded on the column while controlling the guns with handles on both sides. The guns aimed approximately in the same direction as the periscope and automatically transferred between the upper and lower turrets as needed. World War II. Douglas delivered the A-26B to the U.S. Army Air Forces in September of 1943. The invader first saw action with the 5th Air Force in the Southwest Pacific Theater in June of 1944. Its first mission consisted of retrieving Japanese-occupied islands in Indonesia. The Grim Reapers of the 3rd Bomb Group's 13th Squadron evaluated four invaders and detected a hindering in the downward view partially covered by the engines. This issue rendered the A-26B unsuitable for ground support. General George Kinney, commander of the Far East Air Forces, declared, quote, We do not want the A-26 under any circumstances as a replacement for anything. Nevertheless, the aircraft flew several missions up to August 1945, 
some of them in composite flights with its predecessor, the A-20 Havoc, with the 319th Bomb Group and the original 3rd Bomb Group. At the same time, a second round of combat tests took place in Europe, where the invader was better received. The model arrived in September of 1944 with the 9th Air Force. Eighteen aircraft were initially assigned to the 553rd Squadron at the 386th Bomb Group, and after eight missions, none were lost. The 9th subsequently replaced its A-20s and Martin B-26s with the new A-26 Invader. The 416th and 409th were among the first bombardment groups to also convert to the Invader. By November of 1944, they went into combat with the recently operational A-26B, but there was a shortage of the A-26C glass-nosed version. Hence, they had to fly combined missions with the A-20 Havoc until the deliveries caught up. Their missions were mostly successful. The Invader was primarily used in bombing and strafing, but it also executed tactical reconnaissance and night interdiction missions until the end of the war. By then, the 9th Air Force had performed 11,567 missions and lost 67 aircraft overall. After the independent establishment of the U.S. Air Force in 1947, the model was redesignated to B-26. Its attack configuration was left behind, and the Martin B-26 Marauder had retired. An RB-26 reconnaissance version was also designed and remained in service until 1950. The A-26 was among the few wartime aircraft models still in service during the post-war in the U.S. Air Force. Korean War The B-26s of the 3rd Bombardment Group were among the first U.S. Air Force aircraft that participated in the Korean War. Operating from southern Japan, they carried out missions over South Korea and even executed the first bombing in North Korea on June 29, 1950. By November, the 452nd Bombardment Wing flew its first missions from Itazuke, Japan, providing daylight support, while the 3rd Bomb Wing flew night missions. Besides the B-26 standard version, Modified models for supporting roles in weather observation and reconnaissance missions were critical to the American forces. The 452nd eventually had to move to the Miho Air Base on the west coast of Honshu because of the Chinese intervention. In 1951, their intruding missions continued from Pusan East Air Base. By June, the 3rd would cover the western half of the country, while the 452nd targeted the east at night. These actions earned both bomb groups two unit citations and the Korean Presidential Citation. The last bombing mission in the area, 24 minutes before the armistice took effect on June 27, 1953, was executed by Douglas B-26 invaders. They ultimately received credit for eight campaigns, in which the B-26s destroyed 38,500 vehicles, 406 locomotives, 3,700 railway trucks, and seven aircraft on the ground. However, the invader's most notable feat was accomplished by Captain John S. Walmsley, Jr. On September 14, 1951, Walmsley attacked a supply train, but all of his guns simultaneously jammed. The captain then illuminated the area with a searchlight, enabling his wingmen to destroy the train. He was eventually shot down and bestowed the Medal of Honor posthumously. Vietnam War The first B-26s arrived in Thailand in 1960 and were operated by the CIA. During Operation Mill Pond, air support was provided to the Royal Lao government to fight the Communist Lao People's Liberation Army. The aircraft were then deployed to South Vietnam and operated under Project Farmgate, the American effort in South Asia, before the overt entry of U.S. forces into the battle. During the early phase of the Vietnam War, B-26Bs and B-26Cs flew along reconnaissance RB-26Cs, but in a combat capacity. After two accidents related to wing spar fatigue, the B-26 was withdrawn from service in 1964 and replaced by the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. The Onmark Engineering Company was then tasked to improve the Invader for counterinsurgency missions, and the B-26K made its first production flight in May of 1964. Upgrades included improved engines, propellers, brakes, wings, and fuel tanks for use by the 609th Special Operations Squadron. In total, 40 invaders were converted. 
However, in May of 1966, the invader was again redesignated to A-26A due to political reasons. Thailand did not allow U.S. bombers into its mainland, so the code returned to A for attack and was used to disrupt supply lines along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Legacy Douglas built a total of 2,503 A-26 and B-26 invaders. The invader underwent many redesignations during its lifetime, and the A-26A stayed in service throughout the late 1960s, performing active duty special operations. The U.S. Navy also purchased invaders for utility squadrons, target towing, and general utility, and the aircraft was also used by the CIA for covert operations. During the Seaborne Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba in 1961, B-26s flying with the Fuerza Aérea de Liberación (FAL) attacked three Cuban government-held airfields controlled by the Fuerza Aérea Revolucionaria or FAR. The Douglas invader performed many different roles around the world. It took part in the Congo crisis, and other air forces such as the French and the Portuguese joined them to their ranks. The last active invader in U.S. military service was assigned to the Air National Guard and retired from military service in 1972. It was then donated to the National Air and Space Museum. But in November of 2020, a third invader from the Commemorative Air Force flew its first flights after a restoration that took over two decades. SHA-26 support group leader James Dutnelli noted that, quote, We are planning on touring with the aircraft and doing air shows. However, we can legally operate the aircraft to raise funding and that's what we'll be doing. A witness recounted that two men wearing dark shades during an air show were intrigued by the aircraft and asked what its original color used to be. When they learned the invader used to be white with gray trim, one of them exclaimed, quote, My God, it's the gray ghost. We chased that sucker up and down the Gulf Coast. Never could catch him. He'd drop down on the deck and throttle the engines up and leave us standing there. The two gentlemen were Drug Enforcement Administration agents. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels. Also, let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a particular story featured in one of our videos.